Welcome to Analog Jones and the Tempo Film. I'm Steve and returning, actually, permanent hosts on Analog Jones. We've got Brad and Chris. Hello. Brad, are you sure you want to do this? Chris, I, I think I, I think I'm positive on this. All right. That That's your, we're all your three going to team up to really fuck this up. Oh, good. As long as, as, long as we're the plan. As long as we're doing it together. As long as we all have fun. Oh, yeah. First recording in the new house. Chris has got his little man cave going on there. And Brad's in the void. The dark void. Just hanging out in a dark basement. <laughs> Just skiing. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. What does your side say? Is Skiing's that? the easy part? Yeah. yeah, you might remember that. Hell, yeah. Guys can go back and listen to all about that. Um, when was that? January? Oh, I don't remember. Was it January? I think it was January this year. Yeah, Aspen Extreme. It was like one of the... Was that on with Matt? I can't even recall. We were with Matt. Yeah, we were talking yeah. about how we were going to kind of... Well, I don't know if we can't... We talked about how we were going to get hyped up about Top Gun. During that. <laughs> it was Top Gun on a ski slope, but it really didn't translate well to Top Gun. Besides this, he gets reckless and kills his friend, but... Yeah, it wasn't really a Top Gun ripoff. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the best the marketing people had. You don't, Still recommend it, though. You don't always know what you're talking about. All right. Uh, we're going to start a franchise review for this October. We're continuing the tradition. And this year, I just randomly picked one out of a hat. And we're going with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Woo! Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, this is this was fantastic. I hadn't watched this in probably a good like eight years or something like that. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah I saw this with a, a when I was in junior high, and one of my buddies like we were both kind of into horror, and he was really into like the the more extreme horror, and we watched this one, and we were freaked out. Yeah, like, we're like, oh my god, this is based on a true story. This really happened. Oh man, no <laughs> I always, way. I always wonder how many. Well, I assume like. Like a lot of people just fully fell into that. This is like this is real, guys. This is not fake. This was back before the internet, where you believed everything you you saw. Yeah, it reminds me of the Blair Witch, where people just started making up stories that they heard from their friend or whomever. Or Cannibal Holocaust, how like the whole cast hid till the movie was out, so nobody really knew. Yeah, like didn't they have a clause in their contract where they couldn't be in anything else, theater or movie? Yeah. So it, it seemed more real, like they actually died. Yeah, that's great. That's creative marketing. I'll hand it to him for that. That's a good idea. Let's see. Extra camera, slide, share screen. All right. Now we can watch it. After you stop screaming, you're going to start talking about it. There we go. Did you guys get to see all that? I couldn't not see a, anything. Not a thing. Oh, I didn't, did you hear it? <laughs> I didn't hear anything either. Did I need to log in or something? What happened was true. The most bizarre and brutal series of crimes in America. is the movie that is just as real, just as close. Crazy! You gotta make a stop! Just as terrifying as being there. Please, please. Even if one of them survives, what will be left? The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. After you stop screaming, you'll start talking about it. 
Okay, now we got to learn how to turn off screen share. There we go. We're doing it. I, Growing pains. Could you hear it, Brad? I couldn't hear anything, but I didn't oh, see Oh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> so I can, you know, so long as the audience hears it. Yeah. I heard a lot of glasses moving and lips smacking. <laughs> Somebody's enjoying some nice bourbon. Uh, yeah. Um, so with that you know the the entire audience will be able to hear it but apparently not the people who actually need to hear it to talk about it uh there's a lot of screaming and uh it looked like they showed almost every death or the very beginning of every death and i'm like i i thought the trailer now this was probably made who knows somewhere in the 80s when they actually had to sell it on home video but uh yeah maybe maybe not show so much of the death scenes <laughs> yeah it's a, pretty much a a comprehensive recap of the movie there. I know. <laughs> They're like, well, guys, you know, this is what happens. You know, that, that was part of the, so they had it like 20, you know, 30 years ago. They knew in the future that they'd only be dealing to idiots or people in foreign countries who don't understand the language. <laughs> <laughs> we just got to make sure they know what's going on. I mean, that's why the marketing is the way it is today is because they're just like, well, someone not, might not be able to speak our language. So let's make sure they know what's happening. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's go into the quick facts of this bad boy directed by the man, Toby Hooper. Uh, I mean, this is, you know, probably the Toby Hooper movie, just like, uh, John Carpenter's got Halloween. This kind of just yeah. set motion like horror movies from 74 on. Yeah. yeah. Just like uh, just like Highlander, we had a spoken intro with the yeah. uh, 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 gotta get Highlander. Bring it up every time. I want every movie to do this. <laughs> and if they every don't, movie I want has some relation. I want fan edits to just always put a title scroll. <laughs> I want to know what's going on before I get in there. Uh, he also produced this, which was news to me. Uh, so, I mean, I don't even know what he did before this. It couldn't be much. I don't wonder where he got those images of solar flares. Like, that's what that first part was with the sun mm -hmm. and the stuff coming off. That was in 1974. He didn't have very good imagery back then. So, impressive. Yeah, he probably just got it from some kind of, like, science-y documentary i just wonder where that fits into the the genre but i liked it hey That's can we intro. just uh, use this That's probably what happened he just probably asked for it got a bunch of free stuff because you know those sciencey people they're not getting any money for it except from high schools his buddy works at nasa yeah <laughs> he's like you know i put together rockets and uh, help people get to space but you're more popular because you made a guy stab people with a chainsaw it's like yeah I'm entertaining. Uh, we had written by Kim Hinkle and Toby Hooper himself. So good job. Uh, I'm sure this was constantly rewritten during the like hot ass summer in Austin, Texas, when they made this just sweaty writers sweating, carrying around typewriters. Oh, it looked that would have been just brutal filming that because you're, yeah, you're oh, in yeah. central Texas, middle of summer, it's just hot and humid, and you're filming. I guess I read they had to film like really long hours because. They had to get all the equipment back because he was renting it. Yeah. And like the, the dinner scene was the absolute worst because it's they like had to 10 get hours. Yeah. It's because it's they only had two masks of the old man mm -hmm. and the masks were melting. Oh, <laughs> it's crazy. That's how hot it was. You got to admit it, or you got to remember that not only is it hot outside, but then you have all these people closed indoors with all that body heat. Then add the lights. And oh. then the, the rotting food. Oh, that too. Yeah, but oh, I mean, that's God. that just must smell delicious. They said it was hell. Yeah. Um, I heard that. I don't know how they, they were um, injecting the meat with. Um, what is it they put in a dead body? So they formaldehyde. Stay, yeah, formaldehyde into oh. the meat. And I'm like, oh, that's gross. Dude, that's that so looked, oh, that set looks like in real, even, you know, in real life. It just like that would just be the worst stench you'd ever experience. But I bet in real, I bet. It had to be just disgusting. Yeah, we went to the university around here to see cadavers. It's it was awful. <laughs> I cannot imagine hanging out. It Sets the mood. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you don't have to get into character, especially if you're Sally. Mm -mm. Oh, gross. Uh, distributed by Branston Distributing Company, and I only mention that because I'm pretty sure that's like mafia. 
Like there's some mafia ties to this movie. Mm, nice. Um, yeah. So that's a lot of people didn't see much money because no one really knows how much money they made. I mean, they know how much money was made in the box office, but you know, I think there's like a lot of, not many people made money from this until nowadays when you can go get autographs. I'm sure they make a fortune if they're still alive. $60 an autograph. Yeah. yeah, and us assholes talking about it, making the money that we get through this t- podcast. Yeah, because one person listens to one of this podcast, and then they get all these ads on Facebook and shit. Are you, getting, what? you guys are getting paid? Uh, Whoops. Negative. <laughs> I'm getting paid negative money. <laughs> uh, released October 11th, 1974, and what a fantastic time to release this. It's perfect. Oh, man. Could you imagine being like some of the first people to go to a drive-in and watch this? No. Oh, it would have been off. That would have been totally insane because this would have been – it's a virgin – it's like when you introduce some invasive species to like some new environment. Yeah, it's just – I mean, there is not much making out going on during this film. (laughs) It's it's disturbing now. I can't imagine 40 years ago. So imagine it's like 1972, between 1972 and 1975, and it's like you have The Exorcist, and then you have this. And the trajectory of horror is just, it's just on, it's a hockey stick yeah. up to the right, you know? Yeah, it's crazy, because I, I would say like 1969, I think that's when uh, Night of the Living Dead came out. But yeah. it's funny, I watched Night of the Living Dead like two months ago, and then I watched this, and I'm like, this is such a ramp up. <laughs> And Night of the Living Dead was a huge ramp up. This just goes like through the roof. Uh, I don't I don't think there's anything this shocking except Last House on the Left and Cannibal Holocaust when it comes to the 70s. Well, I guess The Exorcist. Damn, there's a lot in the 70s. Spit on your grave. Ah, yeah. Damn, this is a this is a this is a shocking decade. Yeah, we need to get it back. Yeah, one yeah. of my notes I took was like, this was 1974 and things were like really fucked up back then, but still less mm-hmm. fucked up than it is now. Well, this was coming off what? The end of Vietnam? Yeah, you got Vietnam, then you had like the oil crisis too. Where... Yeah, the... yeah. yeah. A bunch of hippies. That's right. It's, yeah. I mean, this was Toby Hooper attacking the hippies, even though he was a hippie. I think that's probably why he had them attacking hippies, because he probably just thought it was funny. <laughs> because <laughs> if i if i made a horror movie i guarantee you i'd add idiots who just like sit there and think they're popular talking about movies <laughs> just kill no, you're not popular yeah well it'd be even funnier if they thought they were popular but they definitely were not uh <laughs> like like tusk but it just shows his numbers are three a week yeah oh perfect uh is there anything oh this is crazy so i did the um calculations for this and the, it's a budget of hundred and forty thousand dollars. Hundred and forty thousand dollars. that's eight hundred and forty one thousand dollars today's money and it made 30.9 million in the box office now maybe we don't really know since there's so many mafia ties apparently to this but that's 186 million dollars in today's money I'm wondering why some studio wasn't like immediately film another one of these. Well, that's because it was before the eighties and the eighties was like sequel, 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 keep making the money. No studio wanted to touch this movie. Did you No say director, it made, no director wanted to touch this because they thought a, it would it kill a hundred times, a hundred times, the 180. It, it made, it cost eight hundred forty-one thousand for today's money and made one eighty-six million in today's money. I so mean, you're Hollywood had ethics or something back then. I guess, like, because well, there's more discussion about this exactly why all this happened in um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre two. But yeah, I'm supr- I mean, if this was made in 1982, it would immediately had a sequel after sequel after sequel. But there was also some rights problems. I think because no one knew quite who owned what. And I don't even know how that really gets worked out where Canon buys the rights in the 80s. But, you know, it's Canon. 
They just make shit happen. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I think half the movies we do are canon related. I'm sure the mafia is like, man, we thought we were twisted. Yeah, we'll sell to you guys. <laughs> Seems like if the movie we're doing doesn't have like canon or Weinstein's fingerprints on it, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a abnormality. Yeah, it wasn't well, even made. Yeah. I mean, sadly, it seems like the most fucked up people make the best films. I'm just, that's, that sounds terrible. But I mean, Stanley Kubrick was like one of the biggest dickheads alive. Those movies are amazing. Oh, yeah. So they're visually yeah. incredible. Just, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's for some reason, I don't know what it is. Psychos, psychopaths, but. All right, yeah, that was a lot of money. Uh, we'll go into the characters that are in this. I'll start with the good guys, I guess, the hippies. Um, Marlene Burns as Sally Hardsty. Hardsteady? Wait, what is this? Hardsty, yeah. Uh, and her brother, Franklin, which was paid by Paul A. Pertain. Which they call... Which, okay, so we call them... hand. You know, we can't call someone in a wheelchair nowadays handicapped. What were they calling them back there? Like... Invalid? Uh, that's a word. I know, but I've never heard anyone call someone in a wheelchair that. I guess that's like an old culture way of saying that. I no, mean, was it really was that really better than saying like, yeah, Frank's in a wheelchair? <laughs> like, I guess they're fancy back there. I think it means I'm, like immobile. Oh, does it? Can't do stuff on their own. Yeah. You know. Of course, Chris, the guy who sometimes texts words I've never seen before in a phone. <laughs> He's hey, the hey, one my, who knows the definition. <laughs> my autocorrect is outrageous sometimes. <laughs> I've actually wrote full words, then press space, and then look at it, and I'm like, what? That's not... <laughs> like circus. It would just turn around and be like hospital and be like, what are you, what are you talking about? Yeah, autocorrect is really... We got some improvement needing there. Yeah, um, so we got that guy in the glasses, Alan uh, Danzinger, who plays Jerry, which I always forgets in this film. The driver. Every time I see the driver, I'm like, wow, I don't remember you at all. Really? Yeah, he kind of looks like a hippie, but maybe he might be like a CIA agent, too. I don't know. Yeah, I wonder how old he was when he made this. Actually, are they supposed to be in college? Is that their age in this? Yeah, because they're going. Oh, no. I, I have no idea where they're going. I have no idea where they're out there. Oh, they college know it all hippies. Yeah. I thought it was like seniors is what it feels like to me. Not not college seniors, like high school seniors, like the end of the year. They're going yeah. on a road trip before college or something. Or possibly like spring break road trip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nasty cabin in the woods. Well, in the desert, not in the woods. Well, I know it was like their grandpas or their uncles or something like Franklin and Sally's. Uh, and then William Vale is playing Kirk. Uh, and this is, this was the, I don't know. This is just like the jock kind of. Um, and then we got Terry uh, McMinn as Pam, the butt shot herself, <laughs> which I'll be honest. Every time I watch this, I I, I forget that it's not Sally with the butt shot. It's Pam. No, it's Pam. It's all Pam. Actually, I think she did both. She modeled and actress, you know, just during the 70s. Uh, so good for you. Make right. that money. Get those butt shots because she's like a legend. There's so many directors who have literally ripped off that shot and they don't care. They're like paying homage. They did it in the remake. Yeah. She's well, I mean, that's the one that makes the most sense. But there's other directors who have specifically done this in horror because it's just like such an iconic shot. Why not? Um, and then you get nerds, every horror nerd, just like, mm, that was the textile massacre. <laughs> you're you're the one. Like 14 year old guys watch it. Oh yeah. Butt shot. <laughs> That's why I got into horror. I mean, the first boobs I ever remember in horror is, uh, from, uh, Friday the 13th, five. Leprechaun uh, two. <laughs> Everyone knows. <laughs> <laughs> but this movie kind of is this kind of like the playbook for like horror movies to come for the next few decades where it's just like you got the horny teenagers you've got the slasher you know yeah i would say this and halloween and then like uh friday the 13th kind of just like that was the ultimate stamp of just like 
Well, I guess Friday the 13th was kind of like the cheap shoot it in the woods. Halloween was the script, the template. And then I think this was kind of, it's not the first slasher, but it seems like the slasher that everyone wants to redo because it shocked the nation. Like this set the tone. It is this a slasher? I don't know. It's more home alone to me. <laughs> <laughs> he left this house once. That's fucking it. I you know, that's can you write an essay on like <laughs> <laughs> like how home alone is like or no how texas chainsaw massacre is the inspiration for home alone <laughs> i mean he has no booby traps he's not throwing paint cans he's just hitting you when you come into his kitchen no i'm just saying just write an article saying john hughes ripped off texas chainsaw massacre just do it <laughs> the site needs clicks that's gonna get it <laughs> Oh, all right, and then we go to our baddies who don't actually have names. Uh, Edwin Neal played the hitchhiker, who does a fantastic job. Oh, that was that like just Jim great? Carrey. Man. He's like Jim Carrey before Jim Carrey. Uh, especially when you see his interviews. Uh, he's That's... like just elastic. Dude, the, the, all the way up till him getting out of the van, I think, is like what sets the mood for the entire movie. Yeah. It's the intro, just everything. And then him. Well, and then how he cuts himself and then he burns the picture because he's just like, you won't buy it. Burn. It's crazy. And then we got uh, Jim uh, Cito as the old man, later known as the cook, um, which is kind of like the more sane one. You know, he's a little bit, you know, like he doesn't like killing. He just can't take pleasure in it. He can't stomach it. Yep. John Make Dugan sure. as yeah. grandfather, which was a really young man in his 20s <laughs> playing an old man. <laughs> well, I think the reason they picked him was because he was cheap. He really didn't have much experience. He was like working at a a theater. And I think that's why they picked all these. So this is kind of like the, the template for like get people who will make no money that can have, you know, a little bit of acting skill and then just take advantage of them. I, I feel like this movie just set it up for so many other directors. Plus, you probably couldn't get many established veterans in horror back then. No, especially if you're um, Toby Hooper and you're shooting for a, G, a PG rating and you end up getting an X. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I missed that one by a bit. <laughs> well, I love how he's just like, well, there's not much gore in it. And I'm like, yeah, but there's the thing called implied violence. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and you damn near imply it every five minutes. <laughs> just just the foot kicking after he hits him on the head. His feet are hitting that plate outside the door. Yeah. I oh yeah. That's terrible. I mean, he literally could you imagine people like, like the cutting of the hand in the hitchhiker, you know, the rating board was probably like, mmm not going to give this a PG. There's no way. And then as soon as you see Leatherface smash the dude with a mallet, they're probably all like clutching their, Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Toby Hooper walks into this like, so uh, do I get my PG? And they just like, it's like a cartoon. They show the outside door and him flying through the window. <laughs> you guys find this as funny as I did? This is hilarious. <laughs> This is a comedy. Yeah, didn't he? Wasn't he thinking he was trying to make a comedy or something? Yeah, he, he said it was. I thought I was making one of the first dark comedies. <laughs> you went a little heavy on the dark. <laughs> uh, and then the best for last, Gunnar Hansen as Leatherface, an icon. Uh, he's great. Yeah. And Toby Hooper <laughs> apparently picked him because he filled up the entire doorway. Because like Gunnar Hansen, you know. Did all this stuff that he needed to do trying out. And then apparently later on, Toby Hooper just said like, well, you could do the physical stuff and you filled the doorway out. <laughs> like there had to be more to it than that. Right. Come on. I also like how uh, Matt's, we know podcasting icon in my view is only in Brad's. Yeah. What's this implying here? It's like, I'm not, you know what you're doing. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Uh, I did not find my VHS, but I looked up because I had the 1993 uh, MPI, which was the the big seller back then. Was it was uncut, the movie you've never seen in theaters. 
Uh, well, I don't remember anything different back when I watched that. So I, I, I watched the uncut like in this and I don't know any of the added scenes. I, I hope it's just like a couple more shots of like decaying animals. Sometimes, yeah, it's just a few seconds, but now yeah. they can say it's on cut. Yeah, it's bullshit what it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, feature presentation time. I mean, this is going to be quick, folks. Uh, even even uh, the these chatty Cathy's here are going to have a hard time stretching this out because this is like 80 something minutes and it flies. Did you guys... Do you, you, you guys catch a like a Jeepers Creepers vibe to this? Like you've seen Jeepers Creepers, obviously you've mm. seen that, but it's like I kind of got that same vibe where they start out and it's just kind of middle of nowhere and then just some messed up dude and yeah, mm -hmm. just driving. That's also a terrible director. But... Oh yeah, great he's, movie. He's really bad. <laughs> yeah, Ugh. and uh, I also throughout the whole movie I caught some like True Detective season one. Where it's mm -hmm. kind of okay, yeah. Some of that where they you can definitely tell True Detective season one borrowed heavily from this. I could see, yeah. That I think those are two really good movies uh, that got a lot of inspiration from this. True Detective, you know, taking it more in like a obviously detective story and kind of like a, I don't know. I always feel like that movies, you know, like everything, all the colors are kind of drained out of it, and it's almost like documentary. Yeah, yeah. That desaturated look. Yeah, desaturated. And then Jeepers Creepers, straight up just like, yeah, two people going down a road and then get attacked out of nowhere. Jeepers Creepers has one of the best starts I've ever seen of a movie. I mean, not to go into that, but... This, this one is one of my favorite. Yeah, Texas this is Chains really good. Well, I mean, right when you have John Larroquette's voice come up and, you know, go through the whole you know, monologue setting up the story of this crazy family... And then, you know, the the pictures. Yeah, that I mean, sounds... that's iconic. Yeah, just the music and the sounds and the scenes like and where'd they find all these weird looking people? I don't know. I mean, that's what Deliverance did. They just put out hey, you live near here and they look weird. Come on down. <laughs> just the use of the menacing music in this movie is like as good as you're ever going to find. And then, and then it goes right into like the the radio chatter in the graveyard. Just I've never fully have understood it, but since I didn't, ha I couldn't find my tape. I watched with subtitles, and it, mm -hmm. there's so much detail in the stories they're saying, and all of them are awful. Yeah, that that's something I was when I was watching too. I was like, wait a minute, was this added? Because I don't remember this. Um, this is the first time that like I actually paid attention to it, you know, to talk about it. And I started catching these details. This is what I was saying to you. I've seen this like 30, 40 times, but I've never like sat down to pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. To like write notes. Yeah. Um, and then when it gets right into the, you know, the road trip aspect of it, we get right away that Franklin's a little bit annoying. Uh, we kind of have the jockey character, the pretty girl, actually two pretty girls. And then, uh, but it feels like Pam's a little bit um, more, uh, and she's, She's definitely got a lot more anxiety about doing things. You know, she's like, she doesn't go straight into the house right away, stays on the porch and then kind of yells at her boyfriend. Where are you going? Oh, no. Yells at. I don't think that was her boyfriend. See, I think Pam was dating the glasses guy and Kirk. Sally was dating Kirk. Right. I thought it was Sally and Jerry and Pam and Kirk. I don't know. Because I thought they were going to the, the swim hole to bang. Yeah, I thought they were swinging. I don't know what's up, but, but they were definitely Something. going down there to bang. Free love. Yeah. Maybe. Just, you know, yeah, it's just hippies doing what they do, um, living life better than us. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, and then they pitch up, pick up the hitchhiker, which is just fantastic. This guy's got a dead animal draped around his neck. Maybe you don't pick him up. <laughs> I don't know what kind of people you hang out with. It's pretty normal. Yeah. You think maybe he's got some good stories. I mean, he's definitely has some good stories, but man. You're taking a risk. Well, that he's got, uh, he's got like, well, like a potato sack or something like that with all this stuff in there. That's and what he's saying. Yeah. That, that pouch made out of pelt. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. That's where he takes out his, uh, what does he have in that pouch? Doesn't he have something for gunpowder? Yeah. That's right. The gunpowder. Who, I guess, what is he like hunting with a musket? Coil? How many <laughs> times has he burnt these pictures where people don't buy them? daily yeah 
there's a lot of bodies in that house so you know they've trapped quite a few people there yeah just love the foil he pulls out this big piece of foil and he's like (laughs) (laughs) just in the back of the van they're like what are you doing well what he cuts himself and then he cuts franklin later on but definitely you could tell um listening to him we'll talk about it more during the second one but um how you know these two guys the hitchhiker and then um was it bill mosley's character like they have the same mannerisms um and we'll talk more about that but like i could just right when i saw this because i've seen number two so much i was like wow this is a really good job like they both seem like the same people um and that was the rumor that i was told for years uh and then of course just believed it that they were the same actor yeah, same actor or same character, yeah, and I was one hundred percent behind it. It is the same character. No, it's not the same character. It's it's not. He's even got the same scar on his face. They're twin brothers. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so Bill Mosley, you know, watched this movie a lot and like borrowed the mannerisms from him, and I was like, good job. But uh, there's a reason why he's a horror icon. Yeah, and then they uh, they get to the pit stop after you know kicking his ass to the curb. Which, I mean, if this was would have been done in like the like fifties or whatever, he probably would have been shot. No one would have said a word. Dead hitchhiker on the side of the road. Meh, it happens. It's Texas. There's one funny scene at the, the gas station. If you notice, mm-hmm. every time he goes out to talk to him, the cook does. The guy washing the car comes out. So then the cook walks away. He starts dragging his bucket. Then the cook comes back out. And he's like, Okay, going back out and just starts washing the car some more. I don't, you know, I, I've always wondered what, what the hell is up with that old guy. Is he someone that helps the family clean up or something? I've always wondered that there was more to that. Like the whole town's involved? He's an accomplice, yeah. Yeah, something. Uh, okay, and uh, they, uh, they make the pit stop and... Uh, I don't remember. Oh, he says, oh, he kept telling him, you know, you shouldn't go up to that house. Yeah, you don't he's want telling to him not house. to go up to that house. Don't go up to the murder house. And of <laughs> course, they go and do it. Well, at least they had a, a reason, you know, because it was their father's house or a grandfather's mm-hmm. house. I think it was grandfather, right? Grandfather's house. Yeah. yeah. So at least they had a reason to, you know, kind of, you know, it, it's not like they're like, we're going to go up to this haunted house and you're not going to stop us. Yeah. And when is he trying to get them not to go there so they didn't get killed? Or if he's like, fuck, yeah, I don't want I, anybody I, next to my property. I I think he's now like inundated so much with their murder that he's OK with it because, you know, helps his barbecue shop and everything like that. But I don't think he knows what they're doing is really bad and he doesn't really like it. Uh, I think that's what they're trying to go with. That's what I get. That, that is, he's actually kind of a good person just raised in a fucked up family so yeah he's our moral center of this movie yeah uh as good as it gets <laughs> <laughs> well and he hates the hitchhiker too because i can't figure out if the hitchhiker is actually family that's what he he says his boys he calls them his boys all the time I but know, is it but like he... i call my animals my boys yeah i don't know <laughs> i i mean i assume because you know it's it's family f- throughout the rest of this uh franchise it's all, all about family and stuff like that i'm assuming it's supposed to be his like son or something uh and he just hates him uh because like <laughs> just kicking him like, in you the dumb ass motherfucker or something yeah. like that. you're gonna get us caught i love that the jump ass kick <laughs> i just love it when they get to the dad's house there's there's like there's action I mean, I think they're introduced within like 20 minutes, like uh, Leatherface. It, it's fast. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's definitely one of the, it's like just amazing how he just comes out of the doorway, smacks a guy, smashes his leg against the the sliding door. And then it, it starts it, twitching. Yeah. And then it's over. And as a kid, when I watched that, that fucked with me. Oh, that yeah. And you remember. So they get to Hardesty place, the old Hardesty place, and they just ditch old Franklin. Like everyone else goes off to like bang or whatever. And they Franklin's get... just down there blowing raspberries. <laughs> and you know, I always remembered that as I thought Leatherface had like some meat cleaver and just like beheaded the guy, but I just must have misremembered it all those years ago because no, it's definitely a hammer. And he just shows up out of nowhere, just pow. 
Well, they set it up earlier too, where they uh, the hitchhiker talked about like how good uh, people, you know, in the slaughterhouse could take out an entire um, cow in like one whack. Which I think he also told the story how it took some people you know, like maybe hitting him one, two, three, four times. Um, so they kind of allude to you know Leatherface being the really good one, and then they kind of show Grandpa what it would be like if someone's really bad. Now, obviously. It's a little ridiculous. <laughs> Grandpa was the best, though. He was the best. <laughs> Just not now. <laughs> Grandpa's like 120 years old somehow. I know. I don't know how that works. That but I guess, the, yeah, apparently drinking human blood, that's the way to do it, guys. See, QAnon is right. Yep. <laughs> Biden's actually 103 because he's been drinking that baby blood. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, that's why you we should vote get... for. That's why you should vote for Trump in the next election. <laughs> We're gonna get another email. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, not only are they ugly, but they're still talking about Trump. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, and then the hook scene. You know, we get the Pam's butt, which is fantastic. Um, and then the hook scene that everyone swears that they see her go through the hook. But that never happens. <laughs> Toby uh, Hooper is still thinking like, I'm getting a PG rating out of this sucker. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't. There's no blood. Go. No, no blood. Done. Oh, God. And, that, and then later on, it's funny how quickly they get to, you know, them basically finding Pam in the freezer. Because I think it was the, the glasses guy goes up there, finds her, and she gets up out of the freezer like. Yeah, there's like a two-hour time jump. And then he's like, well, I'm going to go look for him. He set his back here through the, the sheds. He's like, ah, yeah, the shed's over there. I fucking hate Franklin, but. <laughs> God. Well, I think he's supposed to be annoying. But I kind of can't cheer for him to die. Like, I don't. I, I'm like, no. No, I don't think any of the characters deserve to die. They picked up the hitchhiker. They were nice to him until they were like, okay. We, we made get a rid mistake. Of, like, nobody did the traditional, like, drugs to get premarital sex any of the traditional mm -hmm. like horror movie tropes they just went into somebody's house when they shouldn't so trespassing but yeah uh and, and, you know he gets whacked with the hammer i was like man leatherface is good um now that's a lot of bodies like two human bodies well okay pam's not that big but you know you got three bodies now that's a lot of meat I was just like, but I, they got a deep freeze, so maybe they can keep mm -hmm. it a while. They might have a few. Yeah. Um, so they need to like gasoline for to keep those things running. Yep. Yeah. Because yeah. there, I didn't see any uh, electrical post out there. I didn't see anything. Where is that electricity coming from? <laughs> that the generator reminds me. They used a lot of like atmospheric sound as soundtrack. I think for this, because like the Probably. generator sound yeah. when they're first coming up is adding a bunch of like tension and. Yeah, it, I love that. The, the camera was used for that. And then when they fall into. She who was it? Oh, yeah, she falls. Oh, into yeah, that room. falls into the room and they start using that screeching and like, yeah, the chicken. <laughs> and then after he kills Kirk, not Kirk, but Jerry, and he goes and sits down and he's freaking out. And the chicken's just going off. Yeah, it's I was like it's a lot of nice sound texture. Yeah, the ambiance is like, you know, whenever you go to like. When you guys were kids, you remember like going to haunted houses and it's like they all kind of tried to capture the same sort of vibe to it. Mm -hmm. They guy. all had a chainsaw guy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then it's like as soon as Pam is found and uh, Glasses dies, you know, we get the chase with Sally, which must have been really hard on her because she's just screaming the whole time. I, I mean, I don't I don't know how you're running around like that, but this is when Gunnar Hansen almost like fell. And uh, had the chainsaw just fall on them. Uh, that that's when they got the clever idea to take the 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 actual chain off of it. Oh, they they had the the chain on the whole time. So not the whole time. I, I guess they only had like three chainsaws or whatever, and two of them didn't have chains, and one did. And that you could always take the chain off. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say, yeah, you have the chain on there. You're redlining that sucker and freezing it up as much as he's revving it. Yeah, like I that. wonder how much gas they went through. By the way. With this saw running all the time, but I guess he was he took like a sharp turn um, around a bush and he kept saying, like, I don't know how many times I can do this shot. And I don't know why he was using a chainsaw with, a you know, a chain on it. 
But yeah, he fell. That thing came up in the air and everyone just held their breath and then it landed beside him. Whew. I- I'm assuming they uh, decided to do a new shot after that or got him a different chainsaw. <laughs> it would have been a real Texas chainsaw massacre. <laughs> yeah, that would have been. Uh, that would have ended the movie real quick. Uh, then again, they were making it for the mafia, apparently. So maybe they just would have found someone real quick. <laughs> Find another big guy. Fine. Uh, yeah, so they get uh, back to the gas station because she runs away and then she goes back to the original pit stop place, the gas station, and Grandpa does one of the most awkward I'm going to tie you ups I've ever seen. Well, that's how he like, hits her with a broom and I smack her with a broom and the way you smack your wife. Oh, uh, yeah. He's, well, I guess I called him Grandpa. He's not even that. He's the cook. The cook, yeah. Anyway, uh, he's not trustworthy. Don't worry. Nothing's, everything's going to be okay. Just get in this sack. <laughs> and then this this is the part of the humor that i understood like when you know the cook come go, gets out of his truck and then comes back and says, i had to turn off the lights because that electric bill will kill you or something like that <laughs> like, like i see some of it in there um it's just so overshadowed by you know one of the most dreadful horror movies ever made <laughs> yeah there's a lot of humor elements when you think about it that way yeah, uh, and then you know he takes him back to the house, and then we have her bound and gagged, and we got that cool shot of the the full moon, and there was two thoughts that went through my mind: one, that's luck, mm-hmm. <laughs> and two, that's actually really hard to do on film. Like it's hard to do on anything to capture it like that, but you have to have like a lot of patience with the exposure of getting that. So I bet that shot took a while, and uh, I appreciate it. Um, and then, uh, yeah, she, we, we start the dinner scene and we're practic. We only got 10 minutes left of this movie. And I text Chris. I was like, I can't believe this. I thought the dinner scene was like every time I think it's like halfway during the film. Oh, it's right there at the end. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we got the, you know, the dinner scene is going on and I was talking about the chicken, like art piece that they had like that. And then how the cook kind of like. You know, you know, admits everyone is like, can't take no pleasure in killing. And then Grandpa comes out and does his best to just drop a hammer. But what I find funny was Toby Hooper, I guess, when he was acting, they're like, yeah, when you successfully, you know, when you start to suck the thumb and everything, act like a child, like a baby. That's why he's going like this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. But, I mean, when they get Grandpa... That's grandma and the dog they're sitting with, right? Yep. Yeah. Apparently not, but that is grandma. What? That's what I thought. It's not? No, grandma's in the next one, too. Well, yeah, but I, I thought that's like the same grandma from the first one. Like... Well, that one was a skeleton, so. Oh. Oh, that's now right. I'm totally yeah. confused. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it doesn't matter. It's it's horror movie logic. Shit, who yeah. cares? It could be the same person because I know he put um, the reason he did that is because he's like, well, they all these people had to come from someone. So yeah. that's basically I think what he's saying is the cook, you know, was the husband and uh, the hitchhiker and uh, Leatherface were the children. Mm-hmm. And of course, in the second one, we find out that they were supposed to, they, you know, they were twins. And the other one was in Vietnam, which I, I think he actually talks about his brother in Vietnam, doesn't he? Inside the van. I don't remember. Oh, I thought he said something about not. I can't remember. But that could be just like when I watched the commentary for the second one, Toby Hoover, just like revising history. Or maybe with just what was in his head and he never got on camera. Who knows? Yep. I don't know. And then we get an escape and she's running for her life. And <laughs> that it's truck second, driver. It's like the second time she jumped out of a window, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. To get away. And it just crumbles. Oh, yeah, and they did a pretty good job setting up the stunt man or woman that was jumping through that window. Uh, so yeah. good for them. I didn't then, notice a cut. No, I, I they did a good job. Um, most even films nowadays do a shitty job of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just look down, and you see it, and like a 130 pound woman turns into like a 200 pound man <laughs> with broad shoulders <laughs> and a put Vaseline on it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so she's running for her life, and then uh, they luckily run across that truck driver who gets out and got 
he got a wrench and just smokes Leatherface. It's just a brave semi truck driver, and then the other truck comes and saves Sally. And then they just leave that guy. Like, That's what I was wondering. I never really like, thought assholes of assholes just leave him. It's like what the fuck? It's like this guy just saved her life, and then she's like, "Hey, maybe go back and help my help the guy who saved me." And why do they crawl out of the semi? He's trying to cut the door, but he ain't cutting through it. Just fucking drive. Yeah, drive. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. Because, I mean, if you look at it from the semi-truck driver, you know, first he just runs over a dude because he runs over the hitchhiker that was, like, slashing Sally Mm -hmm. up. So he just smashes someone. Then he gets out of the truck and he's like, oh, my God, are you okay? And then the dude's chasing him with a chainsaw. And this truck driver's not in good shape. So, you know, like, running like that's a little hard on him. So, (laughs) But, yeah. Just put it and drive. Just drive away. <laughs> yeah, and and Mad Max, that's all they drove was the semi. It doesn't it works. Yeah, you could just I mean, just get away really quick. But uh I mean he still smashed his leather face with right in the face. Uh there's a funny story too about that. Gunnar Hansen, like when he falls, the first chainsaw didn't have a chain on it on purpose, and they put like a piece of metal and some you know meat there. So like when it went down. They were hoping it would cut through the pants um, just enough. And he's just like, this won't cut through the pants and everything like that. So they're like, "Uh oh, so we have to use a real chainsaw. This is serious. (laughs) They strap his leg with a piece of metal. Yeah, I'd be like, no. (laughs) And then they slap the meat on it. Then they put the new pants on and they had to get this shot. I think they only had like two or three pairs of pants, which for a small budget film in the middle of Austin, Texas, you know, in 1974 was probably a big deal. And so he it lands, it cuts through him. And when he's grabbing his leg, because it got so hot, the chain on the metal, he thought it cut through his leg. That's him actually grabbing it because he thought he just cut through his leg. And you could actually see the satisfaction when he realizes everything's okay and he gets up and grabs the chainsaw. He's like, that's <laughs> that was real acting, folks. <laughs> that's a happy I accident right that. there. Yeah, you can see it. I paid attention to it after hearing his story about it because I – watch one of the documentaries on it that was made in like 1984, like 10 years after, I mean, before even the second one was coming out. So, um, and I can tell you right now, the best interview in there is the hitchhiker. That guy, that guy does, has no, gives no fucks. <laughs> like he'll tell you the truth and you know, everything he says, he's just like, well, you know, they said they wanted me to act goofy. I'll act goofy. I'll act crazy. I can be crazy. I'm like, yeah, we got that, dude. <laughs> Loud and clear. <laughs> it's like super troopers. I'll call him a chicken fucker. <laughs> yes. Oh, all right. Um, no one recommended this. So I'll start with Brad here at the top here. Do you recommend Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1974? Um, yeah, 100%. It's one of yeah. the greatest horror movies ever made. All right, Chris, same question. Completely same answer. It is an amazing movie. It's a sweep. I mean, how can you not? This movie flies. It has everything. I mean, this is fantastic. And I get why people were terrified. I mean, it's a little docile when it comes to the gore than what we're used to that they ramped up. But it still, like, freaks you out. Think of what year it came out, though. I know. Well, I'm just saying, like, you know, when we went to all access in the 80s, you know, excessive violence in the 80s and the 90s, we I don't know what we were doing in the 90s until Scream came back. Um, then we got a little smart, you know, like dialect, you know, their dialect started to become witty. Um, but yeah, this was man, the 70s had some nasty horror films. And this is like the king. This is Halloween. It has to be. Yeah, I'm I guess pretty- you could say Exorcist. Yeah, you know, after this movie, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of wanting, I'm in a Jones and for a burger about right now. <laughs> Get yourself some chili. <laughs> Don't skip on the meats. <laughs> Don't skip on the meats. Uh, all right, let's go on to the museum. This is the part of the show where we go out in the film jungle like Indy and bring something back to our TCM. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Wing of the Museum. This is going to be a great wing throughout all four of these films. All right, I let Brad go first last time. So, Chris, you're up. Uh, I'll just go with the camera sound. I love that. It's iconic. Every time you hear it, you know what it is. Oh, the burn, burn. 
Oh, yeah, the just Polaroid. have that playing the whole time, scaring the shit out of people. Great choice. Yep. How about I'm you, gonna, Ed? I'm just going to go, just the casting, and like, where do they find all these weird-looking people? Austin. <laughs> Keep Austin weird. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, bravo. I mean, it is tremendous. I mean, it attracts the the best and the weirdest in Texas. There's no doubt about it. If any, if you, if anyone out there is listening or watching, uh, just go to Austin. It's amazing. Uh, loved ever. I've, I've been like four different times. I've seen like two different, two different times going to the Alamo Draft House, getting like double screeners there each time, getting so drunk that I can't remember the end of the second film. So <laughs> it's a good time. I love Alamo, <laughs> and no one judges you. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like, mm, you do you. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to what did you guys watch? I'll start with this. I watched She-Hulk, and uh, I haven't watched anything past the second episode. Um, I know I'm a misogynistic pig, and I hate women, so it makes sense. Um, but uh, the CG looks like crap. And they're really pushing hard to let you know that she's a woman in a man's world and she can make it. One of those, With huh? Real hard. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, you've got people that are reacting way too hard to the hate. You've got people defending it way too much, like, you know, like they made it. Uh, the internet's pretty ridiculous with this, but I mean, I just said one time something about it, and it's just like, you hate women. <laughs> like, just, wait, what? All the social media algorithms are kind of like they're, they're designed to push you to one extreme or the other. So yeah, and they, and they work really well because like some of the smartest people in the world build these algorithms. Mm -hmm. But oh, it's yeah. legitimately just not good. I don't. I, I mean, I get what they're trying to do. It's, you know, the sitcom vibe. And um, apparently that's what the comic book was like. Mm -hmm. And that's that's fine. I don't I just think it's got too much of the I'm a strong female woman and I can, you know, do all this and yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, yeah, I think like that's such like a nineties feminism kind of like outlook. Like I can do whatever a man can do. And I think it's just kind of dated now, but they push it so hard. Like it's so just in your face. Yeah, and you're like, move past that. It's like, yeah, we, we, yeah, we believe it. Yeah. I, I mean, I get it. Um, but she's a, definitely, she's got more of a personality than Captain Marvel. I mean, that was Captain Marvel's problem. She was a piece of cardboard and, you know, ultra powered kind of like Thor was at the beginning when I thought it was just like, ridiculous. Like I hated Thor. Cause I'm like, he can do, he's a God. Yeah. It's, What's I the fucking like point? I don't like Superman. Yeah. I hate Superman too. He can do anything. <laughs> That's and his superpower like, is to be able to do anything he needs to. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, boy, I mean, he's got this rock. I mean, this rock could hurt him. I'm like, yeah, that's not enough. <laughs> it's not working. I mean, when Captain Marvel turned herself into a rocket and took down Thanos' entire ship, spoiler alert if you guys haven't watched that yet, uh, that's when I'm like, mm, I quit. I, <laughs> what's the point? Just like, yeah, it would have been nice to have you a few years earlier with your laser <laughs> fist there. And... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean when we all died? Yeah, that would have been cool if you would have helped. Yep. All right. You guys been watching anything? You can go, Brad. Um, well, you know, I, I watched this on, I don't have this VHS. I, I don't have a VHS player at home, but you let me kind of tag along here. Center. And I watch this on Tubi. And right now my Tubi algorithm, speaking of like just steering you to the extremes, it must think I'm just some psychopathic incel. I mean, it's recommending like you would probably like Samurai Cop too. And it's like, you know, actually I probably would. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably yeah. on some watch list right now. <laughs> so did you enjoy Samurai Cop 2? <laughs> I haven't got to it yet, but we will, I will someday. Um, oh, when was it watching, made, by the way? I think it was made in like 2015 or something like that. Oh, so it's 17. recent. Oh, yeah. okay. So what um, I've been watching is still House of the Dragon and Rings of Power. And unfortunately, um, Nebraska football. Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> Rings of Power, I like fell asleep last Friday during the episode, so it's kind of, let's just say it's a little slow. It's it's good, but 
It's like you need note cards. I love fantasy, but some of those names and places, I'm like, hey, are they talking about a place or a person? I can't remember. Yeah, no kidding. I have to stop yeah. and like Wikipedia some of that stuff. Um, and I'm kind of a nerd with that too. And and uh, I'm having trouble keeping up. And then How's the Dragon though? That's just like, that's George Martin getting his fingers <laughs> back into it. And there's a lot yeah. of moral ambiguity in that. And it is yeah. like, if that's your thing, it's like, it's you're going to like it. Yeah. They're not holding back on that show. <laughs> it's on my list. It's a good one. Uh, how about you, Chris? I watched Your Name. It's an anime that I've been meaning to watch. It's from mm -hmm. like 2016. It won awards and everything. It's gorgeous. And a great story. We've got a deal. Whenever we go to Target, I get to watch an anime later. So I chose Your Name for my first one. I, I finally cashed in on that. It was great. It's like it makes you want to cry. It's beautiful and a great story. Way different than this movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Completely opposite end. You didn't think this thing was a tearjerker? No. No. Rip your eye right out and squeeze those tears out. Yeah, it's a it's a foot jerker. Yeah. Uh, all right, that'll end it this week, and we'll be back next week with uh, another one of the Texas Chainsaw Maskers. I think you can, I think you know which one, guys. That's six. right. Number six. <laughs> Just skip it a few. All right. So remember to be kind. And rewind. Rewind. <laughs> get there. Get there. I'll do a little countdown. <laughs>